We've looked several times now at the example of a DC motor speed controller. So in open loop, I want to check to see how we reject disturbances that come in. So remember that our transfer function, g of s, looks like this. We have some gain a over tau 1 s plus 1 times tau 2 s plus 1. So this is the model of our plant. You'll remember that the open loop model looks a little bit like this. So we have our plant g of s. We have a disturbance input that has some gain, and so b over a represents some gain. We'll see what those values are in a moment. So I'm going to let a equals 10, b equals 50, tau 1 equals 60, and tau 2 equals 600. These are fairly realistic gains for the DC motor that we use several times. So my goal, my design goal, is that I'd like to have an output speed of 100 radians per second. And that means that I'm going to have uh, that I want y of s, this output value, to be equal to 100 radians per second. And so ideally I'll have my input r of s also be equal to 100 radians per second. So here I'm actually writing this as a function r of s, not 100 seconds inverse, but 100 over s. So this is a step input of magnitude 100. And that's what this value 100 here represents. So it's a coincidence that the s in the upper equation here represents seconds, and the s here represents the frequency domain. So if I want y to approximately equal r, I'm going to choose again k equal to 1 over g. Therefore, k equals 1 over 10. So now, if I choose the limit as s approaches 0 of my open loop system, so I'm going to multiply kg, which is my controller k, times the plant g. I'm going to use s as part of the final value theorem, and we're going to multiply it by the input r. So as I add these values to the equation, I'm taking the limit as s approaches 0 of s times 1 over 10, so 1 over 10 is the gain k that I'm choosing, and then my plant g, which is 10 over these two values, 60s plus 1 times 600s plus 1 times my r reference input, which is 100 over s. So I do a little bit of canceling, set s equal to 0, and I end up with a value of 100 for y equal to infinity, y tending towards infinity time. So this gives me a steady state value of y of 100. So for td of s equal to 0, then my steady state value for y is 100 radians per second, which was my output goal. So that tells me that for a zero disturbance, the system seems to behave pretty well. So what if instead I choose that now I'd like to have a disturbance input of about minus 0.1 newton meters. So in the s domain, that's minus 0.1 over s. So remembering that the open loop transfer function is my disturbance t of d times g of s plus g of s times k of s, my controller, times r of s. That is, I have a over 60s plus 1 times 600s plus 1. That's my plant g of s. My input td of s is multiplied by b over a. That's the gain that showed up in our open loop diagram. And then we still have to multiply g of s times r of s times k of s over on the right-hand side. So that r of s, again, is still going to be 100. T of, s, t of s, as you recall, was minus 0 0.1 over s, a step input. And then 100 over s is my step input for r. So again, I've just added in the values that we selected for our various step inputs. Substituted a equals to 10 and b equals to 60, which were the gains that we chose. And tau 1 equals 60, tau 2 equals 600. So if I evaluate this now for y of s and take the limit of s, y of s for these values, t, d of s, and r of s, I find out that the limit as s approaches 0 is 95. So that tells me that the steady state value for y is 95 radians per second with a disturbance of minus 0 0.1 newton meters. So clearly, now that I've added a little bit of a disturbance, I compromise on my steady state value of y. That is, I haven't been able to reject this disturbance that came in.